Hi everyone, today I've got here a tiefling from Artisan Guild. This is part of their half demon set. Last month, um, so last month was the sort of male half demons, this month is the females, so it's a two parter set. Got this from their patron, and I honestly love these sculpts, like pretty much all of Artisan Guild sculpts. There's a lot of detail here, and I'm going to be using her in my D&D campaign as a tiefling warlock. I'm going to be having some fun with this and doing a slightly different wash. For the first time I'll be mixing my own wash. So stay tuned and take a look at what I'm doing. So to start off I have primed this one with a, an undercoat of Mechanicus Standard Grey and now I'm going to start off with the skin. It's always good to start off with the lowest layer. I have here some Demonette Hide which is a wonderful almost lilac colour. Uh, tieflings can be basically any colour you want them to be, so I just chose this because I, I like the idea of a light purple tiefling. I'm going to go around now and just, using a thinned down version of Demonette Hide, go and paint in all of the skin. I'm really not being too cautious right now, because if I go over anything like the necklace or the clothes, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to go around and make sure I get all the skin. I'll do the horns in the same colour, not forgetting the hands, as well as, because she's a tiefling, the tail. And as advertised, I was quite messy with that purple. Uh, moving on now, I've got one of my favourite colours. This is Corvus Black, and this is a nice off black that I think will do very nicely for her hair, as well as... I I like to keep things sort of the same colour, top and bottom, so if I do a small area like the hair, I like to also do something near the bottom, such as the boots, and <laughs> wow, these are, these are big boots. Okay, so let me go around, do the hair and the boots, and then I will, not using this old brush, I will swap down to a smaller brush, try and paint in her eyebrows, if you look there. This is a gorgeous sculpt, and it actually has sculpted on eyebrows. I love Arsene Guild's faces. So, hair, boots, smaller brush, eyebrows, let's see how she looks. With the hair and eyebrows down, I'm now going to attempt to do the eyes. So if you look, if I can get this into focus, you'll see this model's got some very nice sculpted on eyelashes. So what I'm going to do, I've got still Corpus Black here. Um, I could use matte black from the Arm Panther or a Baden black. I'm going to try and just black in the entire eye, including those eyelashes, and then come back and do the white in the middle afterwards. And then with a tiny bit of matte white from the Army Painter, I'm going to try very carefully to just dot in the white part of the eye there. There we go. And because I'm the one editing together this video, nobody but me will ever know how many times I had to redo that before I was happy with it. <laughs> Moving on, I've got here some Zandri dust. Uh, the reason being, a lot of these colours are going to be dark browns and blacks um, for leathers. But what I see is she's actually wearing a shirt under this jacket. So I've got a bit of a lighter colour, like Zandri dust, for this material poking out under her vesty jacket thing, just for a little bit of a lighter, warmer colour. So that goes there along the sleeves, and if you look carefully it does poke out on like the inside of there. So I very well might have to go and tidy up again, because all these colours are quite close together. But let me start with this, get the inside of the shirt there, and the sleeves. Her shirt is done and you can see I'm quite a messy painter when it comes to areas that I'm going to be painting over again, uh, but that's fine. I'm going to move on now. I've got here some dryad bark. No, sorry, this is rhinoxide. <laughs> some of these colours are a bit too similar. This is rhinoxide and I'm going to use this for any of the dark leather details. So I kind of like the idea, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a glove or a hand, but I like the idea that she's wearing just a glove only on her sword hand. Oh, sorry, I've got way too much paint. Just get some off there. 
so uh, gloved hand there as well as I'm gonna paint this almost like I don't know if this is supposed to be like a wristwatch or what but a leather bracelet uh, I'm gonna paint this leather pouch of hers there I'm assuming this adventurer keeps all of her gear in this tiny little pouch uh, as well as I think this would look very nice just in the pants so if I can get underneath there and paint the pants in this color let me go around and do that now with the dark leather done it's now time for the warm leather I'm going to do her jacket in Mournfang Brown. I think this will really add a nice pop of colour. Oh yeah, that's well, a lot, a lot more vivid. So this is going to be for her jacket all over, except for this belt thing in the middle. So all over there. If I get a bit more on my brush. All over the back here. All the way up to the top. At this point in time she's looking quite good however there's lots of browns lots of tans let's brighten it up this corsetti thing in the middle here i was going to do leather but i've done too much brown already so i'm going to paint it like a sash i think the best way of doing this to show off her wealth and opulence would be a nice blue i've got her mccrag blue with some gold accents so i'll start off being rather messy and just painting the entire thing McCrag blue. Uh, maybe this is something she found in her adventures, some sort of magical item, or maybe it's just a pretty sash. Uh, at the same time, I think because of the blue, I want to make that her sort of deal, her colour. So I'm going to paint this fire blue as well and actually make it a blue flame instead of the traditional fire. Well, let me go along, paint the blue there and the fire and the sash, and see how that looks. That blue actually looks quite nice. I'm going to just quickly paint that potion before I do the metallics. And for that, instead of a bright, vibrant red, I'm going to go with gold fallback red. It's more of a red wine colour. Hey, who knows, maybe she drinks wine to heal. Um, but this is going to be for that potion bottle there. The reason being is... Because it's more of like a rich wine colour, it actually will suit the browns and the purples quite nicely. Let me actually swap over to a smaller brush and paint in that potion. Is it wine? Is it a potion? Who knows? <laughs> it's time to move on to the metallics. So I've got here some retributor armour, and it's quite a grimy pot. <laughs> but this is going to be for one the hilt of her rapier again i like the fact that she's a bit of a bit of a hero she's got some loot under her belt and she's got things a bit fancier than the normal tiefling you'd find around waterdeep additionally i'm going to paint this um what do you call this this glyph over here um, it's like maybe a sun emblem hey maybe that's her holy emblem if she's a cleric and finally the reason i've got this small brush is i'm going to try and paint in this necklace if i can get it to focus there uh, let me just take my time paint in this necklace and the nice thing about artisan guild minis is their sculpts are so well done that it's very pronounced i just have to move my brush along there and it will catch the necklace without catching the skin uh, speaking of there's one tiny part i still need to do now with this and that is she's wearing earrings artisan guild um sculptors i am never i'm never ready for this level of detail okay, i've made a bit of a mess but it's fine let me just touch that up with some demonet hide and then move on. Those blues and golds make an awesome combination. Right now I've got some iron hand steel and that's just to pick out the blade of this weapon here as well as the, I think it's metal, banding around the potion bottle. 
And just because I still have some of my wet palette, a drop of gullible back red for the jewel around her neck. I changed my mind. There's one more thing I want to do before I give her a wash, and that's use a tiny, tiny bit of Nagaroth Night. I should get a little bit less on my brush here. And I'm going to very carefully pick out her lips and her nails in this color before I do the wash. All of the base coats are done and now it's time to give her a wash. And this is something I want to be wanting to try for a while. I'm not using something like Agrax Earthshade. Instead I'm using something that I first saw on Sonic Sledgehammer's videos. Apparently it's from an old Forge World article. Uh, it's commonly known as Marine Juice. It's one part ripened flesh shade, one part Nuln Oil, and one part Lamium Medium. So I've mixed them all together on my palette off to the side here. And instead of being a earthy brown like Agrax Earthshade, what you're left with is a, I want to say a warm brown. So I'm going to go around and put this all over except for two places. I'm going to try really hard to avoid putting this on the flyer as well as on the eyes. Those two I'll do separately. But all of the clothing will now get a warm brown wash instead of a dirty brown wash which I think also that warmth will do very nicely on the skin. And then I've got a tiny bit of Drakenhof Nightshade on a smaller brush, and with this I will go over the flames, just because I don't want the flames to be a warm brownish colour, I'd rather they be nice cold blue. I might have wanted to water this down a tiny bit, but this will be used for the flame. That wash is dried, and honestly, I really like it. It's nice and subtle, it's not too dark in the recesses. I think it's going to be my go to wash for DD minis. And most minis I would leave at this stage. However, because she is going to be a character mini for my campaign, I'm going to go one step further with some highlights. I've got here some Slanesh Grey. I have watered it down quite heavily, so I'm going to go a few thin layers of this. On some of the recesses. Wow, that's a bit <laughs> a bit brighter than I thought. Let me water it down maybe a tiny bit more, thinning it down. One of my plan is with this is to go around and highlight some of the more exposed areas. So the horns, a good idea there, the nose, the cheekbones. Uh, the fingers, just being careful of where I painted the nails already, uh, and any other areas where the light would hit. Luckily that colour does become a bit more transparent as it dries. I'm going to move on now to some nice edge highlighting. I'm not going to highlight the entire mini, only the areas that stand out nicely. Starting off, I've got some Doombull Brown, and this is a nice warm red brown which will be great for something like like a cloak to really sell that this is a nice warm leather so I'm just going to use the side of my brush and pick out the edges and then similarly i've got some carrick stone here and this is going to be for all of the folds of fabric for the the shirt so here i'm going to have to rely a bit more on finding the edges myself because some of them are a, a bit more I want to say less pronounced they're just little folds in the fabric so the sleeve is an obvious one but over here I'm just going to look at where the shade didn't reach and just accent that a little bit I may have a bit too much watered down this paint let me go along now and just highlight the clothing and then some Eshen Grey here. This is for the boots and the hair. Just to make it a little bit more bright where the sun would hit. And then to highlight the metals, I've got here some Runefang Steel, which is 
notoriously difficult paint to work with if you don't shake it enough. Um, I'm going to go along and just highlight the edges of the blade to make it look a little bit shinier, as well as a tiny bit on the potion bottle, just where the light would hit it. And with that, I'm done with all the highlights. There's one thing left to do, and that's that gorgeous blue flame. So I picked a variety of cool blues. I've got here some Altdorf Guard blue, some Kulgar blue, some Fenrisian grey, and then all the way to blue horror. What I'm going to do is put a little bit more palette here, and I'm just going to paint whatever, like paint them from the bottom up. So this is that first one, that Altdorf Guard blue, leaving a bit of the darkened blue in the recesses. So from about three quarters of the way down all the way to the top. And then without even waiting for that to dry, I'm going to get a little bit of the Kalgar blue and paint that a little bit higher up from that. And then carry on after that with the Benrizian Grey. Maybe putting them a little bit thick here. And then for the very tip, a tiny bit of that beautiful blue horror, which is almost white. It's just got a hint of blue in it. And with that, I've just blackened her base and I'm calling her done. My tiefling warlock is now ready to cause some havoc in my D&D game. I honestly had a lot of fun with this mini. It's a dynamic pose, it's got a lot of little detail, uh, and I really enjoyed that wash. It's got some warmth to it, and subtle, without darkening down everything and making it too dirty. So I'll definitely be using that wash for my D&D minis going forward. If you've got anything you'd like to see, any comments or suggestions, pop them down below in the comment box. Otherwise, please do give this video a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Every time you subscribe, I get a little email from YouTube and it really does make my day. Alright, with that, have a great day further and I'll see you soon.